Hi all, welcome to another Dave Downey Fly Time video production. Here I'll be sharing my favourite flies with you guys, methods of tying them and how to fish them, with the odd wee story here and there as well. Uh, all the flies that I'm going to tie I do personally use. And at the end of each of the videos you'll have a wee list of materials that you can uh, purchase off my website or buy the flies, just in case you missed it during the actual video, so that you can tie these killer patterns. I hope you enjoy the videos and that you'll pass on the word to all your mates and all your fishing buddies uh, so they can enjoy the videos and enjoy the flies as well because as I say there's no, no flies here that don't work, they all catch so I really do hope you enjoy it so this is the last one of 15 as I say I would do 15 in a row I, I, I'm not stopping time doing tying videos but I will not be doing one every single night but that was just to get to the, the opening day of the brown trout season so I hope you all had a good day and you got out I only got out for a couple of hours today uh, <laughs> believe it or not I got to the got to the water and I'd forgot to take nylon with me I managed to rummage an old spool of really really thin stuff for the river uh, out my car uh, I think I got about three casts out of it and then my fly line fell apart because I've been using it for that long so yeah Still caught five fish in a couple of hours uh, and lost a load of fish, but I was fishing with point one two millimeter for three pound blue tr blue trout and, and rainbow trout. So yeah, you can realise what I was up to. So in the vise, I've got a Camasan B one seven five and it's a size ten. I'm going to tie a Dunkel Sparkler today. Do an updated version of it, a much more high definition than my old video. So we need that. We're going to use some Glowbright number twelve for the tail, so that's obviously the, the fluorescent green, you can tie it with amber, you can tie it with yellow, uh, just really up to yourself, but I like the green, one, the green one. This is going to be number 14 gold and silver, it's going to be the body. We're going to use some soft wire, small gold, we're going to use that, you can use any gold wire, but I like the uni wire and I like the very hard stuff. I'm going to use that for the, the, the rib. We're going to an orange cock hackle. We're going to use that for palm on the body of the fly. So I, I, I've got Venriard ones in stock. They're quite good. We need some razor flash, definite advantage razor flash, and silver and pearl for the underwing. And we need some gold marble for the the the, the, the top wing, basically. So that's razor flash. Then of course we're going to use uh, some jungle cock. Right, you can see all these wee sexy feathers down the bottom, but we're we're actually going to split a feather. So I always like to split them, to be honest. So I'm not wasting feathers, and you get a lot of the capes have got splits in them anyway. So that's why I use them. And then we're we're just tying with sheer wisp, uh, sheer sorry, 14-0 uh, black. Now you can tie it with a fluorescent fire orange if you want an orange head. That works as well. So first of all, let's just get started. So we'll just get the thread in. We'll catch it in. We'll get the first wrap wraps of thread done and take that down to the, just before the bend. Sort of half be, halfway between the point of the hook and the bend. So I'm just going to pull off some of the floss, right? So we're getting some of the floss off. Obviously if I'm doing more than one fly, then I'll, I'll, I would take a, long, a bigger piece of floss off. But because I'm just tying the one just now, so I'm going to fold it and fold it again. So that's twice. And we'll go two more times, so you're basically folding it four times, and that will give you. Uh, you can make the tail obviously thinner if you want by just doing it three times, but I like to have it a wee bit thicker. So I'm going to do that again. One, two, three. I should really have had a piece of this ready, but four. So we'll go back halfway up the hook shank, and then we'll catch that in. Then we'll go back down. Right. So reason being is I want to try and keep the body the same thickness. So we'll just trim that. Obviously, it's going to be international size, so we want to trim it at a decent level. Uh, so I'm quite happy with that. That, that that's decent. You could use a wee brush to brush it all out, but it'll, it'll be fine. It'll, you'll not have any problems with it at all. So we want some gold wire. To get our gold wire, just straighten it out. We're going to put a gold wire in just now. Right, catch that in. 
four or five turns, then just stick it onto your, your little uh, spring thing. Then what we want to do is get our, our silver or our gold. Now this works with both colours. So you can tie them up with a silver body, a silver wire rib, and tie them up with a gold body as well. So we're doing a gold version today. So I'll just catch in the tinsel. We'll go back the way, and then we'll go forward. And then what we'll do is we'll just tidy it up at the front end of the hook. Right. So you don't want it too close to the eye because you've got quite a lot of flash to go in the eye. So you obviously don't want to have too much of a build up at the start. So we get a wee bit of varnish. Just stick some of that on there. That just helps the body of the fly stick. And we're just going to rub it with the gold side. This fly is a good fly on wild brown trout waters and rainbow waters. It catches fish everywhere. Uh, the non sparkler version, the one with the mallard wing and the green tail, it was uh, actually a, 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 a Scotland internationalist and a Loch Leven regular, Craig Cowan, that accidentally gave it to me years ago. Uh, just do a wee bit of finish here because you don't want the body coming apart. And, and Craig gave me it on Loch Leven, he had a field day. He, he had a, a, huge amount of brown trout that, that day and I went away down to the caravan uh, with, with the, the wife uh, down to the caravan and, and I ran about like an idiot trying to find the materials to tie this so I've tied the hackle in and I got the materials because I had a, a I was out with Loch Gelly Angling Club on, on, on one of their outings and I just so happened to get a brown trout at £4.9 uh, £4.15 ounces and so many drams, it was just short of the six, uh, the £5 mark, which was quite frustrating. Like that that one fish got me into the Trout Masters, and it was just kind of history from there. So I'm going to just palmer this hackle round, but I basically won the Trout Masters with that, because of that fish. It got me into the final. Uh, I went down and fished the Trout Masters, and I won the Trout Masters on uh, at Pittsford Reservoir. Catch that in. And I say a lot of people tend to go this way with the hackle, bring it forward, but I, I don't have any issues doing it this way. And I've been doing it last for years. I think there was one time in a national semi-final that I was fishing this fly and, and the hackle had came loose. And they were, I almost got done for having an oversized fly. But obviously it was a mistake because the hackle came loose and I hadn't checked it. It wasn't a deliberate. So I would trim that. Um, I says we're leaving quite a lot at the front there. We need quite a lot at the front because we're we're going to put quite a big wing in. So don't worry about that. That will all get fixed. So just pull the hackles out of the way. Right. So the first thing we need to do is get a silver and pearl. And don't get too much of it. Maybe about a dozen strands or something. So we've got we've got a decent amount there. Right. What I like to do. Let's have the thread as far back as possible so it's not close to the eye and then just bind it in right and then once that's in I'll take the scissors and I'm trying to get it so it's what a rounded shape for the tail so I'm basically going right above the tail but cutting it at an angle and you can see you get that it's not a curvature but it is a at an angle on, on, on the wing so we're going to pull this bit up and cut it off now Right, I've got a bit of the supporting strand there. Then I'll just tidy it up a little bit. We don't have to do too much tidying up because we're going to put the other wing in now. So I'm quite happy with that. So now we need to get our gold marble. You know, and, and you don't really need any more than what you put on the, the silver and pearl, but you might want slightly a wee bit more. So I've cut off the same amount, we're going to do the exact same thing, so we'll take the thread back up there, we'll sit it over the top, and then we'll catch it in. Right, now that's falling down, so I need to move it back a wee bit more. Now technically what you could do is have a double wing on this, you could have twice the amount, so you could fold that back if you really wanted to have a bigger wing, but I want them quite slim, I don't want them too bushy. So we'll get that in, and we'll trim that bit off. And we'll do the same with this one, but we'll go a wee bit further back, so it kind of overlaps on top of the silver and pearl wing. 
right? So all we're going to do is tidy this up a little bit now. So get a hold of the wing. You do a lot with your left hand, a lot of squeezing and pinching. So tidy that up, right? And then we'll just do a wee quick whip finish in there before we put the jungle cock on. And the whole fly looks pretty good. It's a, it's a right shape, you know, and it works really well. Uh, worked really well for, for John Dunbar and uh, a few of the boys at Lower Loch Erne. They were catching fish on it in Ireland. John Morton and John Dunbar. So we've got one jungle cock eye, right? And I'm, I'm basically going to take my scissors and cut it right down the middle. This one, ironically, isn't already split, but when you buy jungle cock capes, you get a lot of feathers that are already split. So, you know, a lot of people, oh, I'm not using that because it's split, but, you know, as long as it's only one split, then the feather's completely usable, as I'm about to show you. So, and for you that can't get jungle cock, I know some countries it's a struggle, just use goose bites and cut them. So, there you go. I've cut the feather right down the middle, right? And it looks like a wee set of Looney Tunes eyes. So we're going to push it that way. It's still on the stock, so all you need to do is push it down. See that? So when you, you put it there, it, it goes into place naturally. So you don't need a lot of tons of thread to hold it in place. And that's it. And all we need to do is trim off the excess. And tidy it up. That's it. And that's what that's why this thread is really good because it's a strong thread and it's really really thin so you don't get too big a build up so I'm just going to go back a wee bit and cover up I can see it on the camera that there is a wee bit on the other side of the flight but I'm quite happy with that now so one two three four pull and then again always a double whip finish one two three four and pull that's that Dunk kill Sparkler. I know Barry asked me to do it because uh, Barry's been tying them. Uh, but it's just got a lot of colour and a lot of movement in the water, and, and you know it sparkles when it's wet. So all I'm going to do is just give it a quick coat of varnish. We've got a bit of the supporting strand sitting there. You can see. So we just trim that away just now. Move it out of the way. And I'll get us maybe two coats to three coats of varnish. I don't think the fish really care, it's more for durability. And that's it, it's Dunkel Sparkler. Fantastic fly, catches loads of fish. Uh, I would fish that on it, depending on the cast, but I'd fish a smaller one on a top dropper. And I'd fish maybe a 10 or a double, a size 12 double on the point. Uh, and use that, you know, pulling it on a sinking line or an intermediate or whatever. But, you know, a couple of bushy wet flies in front of you and you're laughing. So I really hope you enjoyed that. It's one of my favourite flies to tie, to be honest, because it's a beautiful looking fly. It'll work for the sea trout as well. So, I really do hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to follow me on Facebook, it's David C. Downey. You can follow me on Instagram, it's Dave Downey Fly Fishing. Or check out my guiding site, www.davedowneyfishing.com. Or just go to my website, eh, my online shop. It's got a few blogs on there as well, which is www.fly-fishingworld.com. So thanks for watching another fly tying video. That, you know, as I say, it's the last in 15 for that marathon run. But I will be doing videos every week. I'll, you know, so get your mates to come, get them to subscribe, hit the likes button, hit the thumbs up button, uh, and then you'll get a wee notification every time I've done a video. So I hope you're enjoying it. Give me your feedback. Let me know how you're getting on, and hope you caught some fish today. So tight lines, guys. Have a good time. Bye for now.